Hey everyone, I'm Nathan with the ebookreader.com. For this video review, I'm going to give you guys a look at the Nook HD Plus with an N2A card for CM10, um, which will give you Android 4.1 in all its glory. Uh, so you get a whole completely new setup from uh, the typical Nook interface, and you can uh, install apps from Google and customize your home screen and do all the kinds of things that uh, Barnes & Noble doesn't let you do, like install the Amazon Kindle app and all these other apps from the uh, Google Play Store. So. Uh, basically, all you have to do is uh, you can get the download for the N2A card. Um, you can also make your own. Uh, last time I checked, it was a little more complicated than it usually is, but you can find the instructions over here at XDA. Uh, so what I did, I, I used the download method uh, for uh, N2A, and then I uh, used it to uh, create a card with a card that I already had. So uh, once you get your card, you just stick it into the uh, Nook's memory card slot. I have a really hard time getting that open, so I'm not going to open it up. But uh, I'll, all you do is you turn off your Nook, put the card in, and then you boot it up and you have access to like an open version of Android 4.1, which is a lot more customizable. And you've got all the widgets and you've got all the access to, uh, like I said, the Google Play Store for Google Apps and all the other apps that uh, aren't available in the Nook Store. So basically what it is is it runs everything off the memory card so you can actually still access your Nook. If I took out the memory card, turn this off, and took out the memory card, and booted it back up, it would be the regular Nook HD Plus and uh, the usual BNNs layout with everything still there, updates and everything. So it's kind of like having two Nooks in one, basically. So if you've seen my other reviews of the NTOA cards, uh, it's the sort of, same sort of deal with this one. So uh, this specific version, it runs, like I said, Android 4.1. Um, there, This is the first version of this available. So this is kind of a look at the default setup of the home screen. We get uh, the Trebuchet launcher. You can actually install different launchers if you want. And all our apps are over here. I actually went ahead in settings. You can customize pretty much uh, everything here. So if you just go into, uh, there's also themes. If you go into launcher, you can go ahead and customize the launcher setup here. I actually made mine 8x6, the grid size. I think the default was 9x6. I kind of liked it just a little bit, uh, the spacing to be a little bit wider. Um, so you can adjust pretty much everything, uh, like with regular Android, you've got all your apps on here if you just want to drag stuff to the home screen. You've also got all the um, widgets, um, so like if you want to just come up here, hit the widget category, then you can add specific uh, widgets uh, depending on what apps you have installed. Like you can, uh, once you have Gmail installed, you get the Gmail app, so it just sort of uh, depends on what apps you have installed, uh, what widgets will show up over here, and then you can add these to your home screen as well. Okay, so I've noticed not all the widgets work properly. So like this is the Google widget. Um, this is actually sized for the entire page right here, but as you can see, the widget's actually rather small. If I did this on like the Google Nexus, it would take up the whole screen. So as far as like the, uh, er there are some like little bugs I've noticed with this uh, first release of this uh, CM10 for the Nook HD Plus. Uh, the three bugs I've noticed is I haven't been able to get Bluetooth Connect. Um, it just won't do it for me. I, I got these Bluetooth headphones that just will not connect to them for some reason. Uh, another thing is, is screen rotations are kind of slow. Uh, that was actually a better one. Sometimes it takes it a few seconds and as you can see right there sometimes it sort of flashes. Uh, so the screen rotations aren't the smoothest all the time. It's actually doing pretty well right now. Sometimes it takes it a few seconds but uh, it just sort of depends. And the other thing is with the volume button. Uh, the volume works but it's like it has to be deactivated so like if I'm in an app say I'm in Angry Birds and I want to adjust the volume I have to hit the volume buttons and then like go back to the home screen and then open Angry Birds again to have the volume adjusted it's kind of weird like if I'm using Pandora you can just pause the music and adjust the volume and then unpause it and the volume gets adjusted otherwise doing this does nothing it doesn't adjust it properly so there needs to be a fix for that at some point uh, otherwise I've been pretty smooth as far as uh, running I haven't really had any crashes or anything um, Scrolling and transitions are smooth, opening the app door is smooth, opening the different apps is pretty uh, smooth as far as that goes. Um, you can use the little end button here to go to the home screen. Um, if you hold it down, you can bring up the recent apps, so you get all your recent apps on here. Uh, so when I first installed this card, it had like no apps at all. Basically it was like the Google Play and a couple of other things. So I installed all this stuff from the Play Store. You can just like run a search for Google to get all the Google apps on here. like. Um, Gmail, YouTube, none of that stuff was on here to start with, so you got to add all that uh, basically just from the Google Play Store. So when you have, an, when you're running it off a memory card like this, you don't have access to the internal storage. You don't have access to the any of the internal uh, components whatsoever. So you can't actually use the Nooks app, uh, built-in app, but you can download the Nook Android app and use it this way. So you still have access uh, to your Nook content this way. You've got the same sort of um, e obviously your same sort of features, you got the same ebooks available, same sort of content 
Um, I noticed that the app isn't particularly fast though. You, as you'll see here, it'll take it several seconds to load. Um, otherwise, it's pretty comparable to the Nook HD's um, you know, built-in app. Uh, but it does definitely take it several seconds to load there initially. Then once you get the book loaded, it's faster. But um, like I was saying, basically you have the same sort of apps. You got the animated, the same sort of features. You got the same uh, kind of page turns. You got the same kind of on-screen stuff. Uh, as you'll notice, the icons are a lot smaller uh, to read. If you have uh, a bad vision, obviously you're not going to be able to read these very well at all. Same with the kind of dictionary, it's pretty small too. Uh, but yeah, you can add notes, highlights, do the same sort of stuff right there. And we can also go ahead and adjust the, the text and the, uh, uh, the theme, the background color, and the margins and all that stuff. So you just have the same basic sort of features as your Nook normally has. Um, we just have it a different kind of setup here. You don't have quite all the features that you have with the HD Plus's uh, regular uh, setup, but I mean, you still have like the comic view and everything for comics. So it's actually a pretty nice app for EPUBs, and you can also um, obviously get your other content on there as well. So I also use uh, Aldico. You can also load in Kindle, so it makes it more of an ultimate ebook reader this way. You can take advantage of the Nook HD Plus's really super high resolution screen, and you can use it to read uh, whatever kind of uh, content you want. Because, like I said, Kindle books work. Uh, you can load in Google's books, uh, Google's magazines. So basically it's just like having an open Android device. Okay, so I tried a few different games on here. For the most part, they work well. Uh, Angry Bird Space worked really well. I actually pretty much played this whole game on here over the holidays. Um, so yeah, it does work well. Like I was saying with the volume, if you adjust the volume right here, it's not going to do anything. And then if we go back to the home screen, open the app. So that's just sort of a bug with uh, CM10 right now. So then the volume adjusts that way. But um, as far as... Uh, the games go. I did have all these games work well, um, but Riptide for some reason doesn't work well. Uh, this, it kind of works, but the steering isn't precise enough uh, to steer the uh, vehicle, so uh, it, you just basically run into the wall the whole time. I'm not exactly sure what the deal is with that, but um, I thought maybe it was something with the accelerometer perhaps, because it, I mean, it looks great and the, um, uh, the uh, animation is really good, the graphics are really good. Uh, but it just does not steer properly, so you basically have very little control of your device. Uh, so I don't know what the specific uh, reason for that is. Uh, I thought maybe it was something with the accelerometer, the way that's working, but it's not because I loaded in this game and you use the same sort of premise where you're steering the uh, plane and it works actually perfectly. So I don't know, it's just that specific game perhaps um, that is causing an issue. So as you can see, I mean, the accelerometer and steering, everything works perfectly fine in all directions with this game, so it's not, well, my driving's not so good, but it's not the accelerometer that's the issue with that game, it's something else. I went ahead and loaded Dead Trigger on here, you guys can find this on the uh, Google Play Store, it's a free game, it's a shooter game, uh, the graphics are really good. Um, in this game, it runs flawlessly, I don't have any, like, kind of jitteriness or any kind of uh, lag whatsoever, it works really well. So it passes the YouTube test, these are playing in HD, it plays well, nice and smooth. Like I said with the volume, if you want to adjust it, you can hit pause and unpause with video and audio files with that bug. So I uh, loaded in Netflix, and the Netflix videos play fine, but a lot of times the Netflix interface is really kind of annoying. It's like it doesn't scroll properly. This is an issue I encounter with a lot of tablets, so it's something to do with the Netflix app. Um, I Sometimes you can mess with the developer options and settings. I haven't really tried any uh, that yet. As you can see, scrolling is kind of painful. But as far as video playing goes, it actually plays the videos fine. I don't know what the deal is with the whole interface. It makes it difficult to uh, browse. Okay, so this has just been a look at how the... Uh, Nook HD Plus works with an N2A card. I think they're going to be having some N2A cards, I've heard, for the regular Nook HD here in January. Uh, so as far as this goes, I just want to give you guys a look how everything works. Uh, there's so much more customization you can do. Uh, you can install different launchers. So this is just sort of a look at the base operation, what you can do with it. I installed uh, most of this stuff in the Google Play Store. I installed the Piano app. I wanted to see how many uh, capacitive points the touchscreen has, and it is 10. Uh, BN then doesn't actually say that anywhere, but uh, it does have 10 points capacitive touch. I was able to test with that. And so I loaded on the uh, quadrant. Uh, I think I took a screenshot of the quadrant score over here. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, let's see, it's right here. The quadrant score was 2,700. 
which is actually uh, it's pretty uh, respectable as far as uh, Android tablets go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review right here. Check out the ebookreader.com for some additional information. I've also got my uh, regular review, the Nook HT Plus right here. And I'll also add a section for the N2A cards for some additional information on that as well. So uh, thank you for watching and subscribe if you like these videos.